In this presentation, we're going to be looking at a few tips and tricks that I put together from my AU class around working with characters. The first tip and trick that we're going to look at is how we can use some of the snapping tools and the status line to assist us in laying down joints directly inside of Maya's viewport. So what I want to do is I want to lay down some joints on my character's fingers, and we're going to be using the project to snap to center to assist us in that process. So this snap to projected center can be used for translations, laying down objects, as well as laying down joints. So if we go to our joint tool and double click on it and turn on projected centering, what it really does is it enables the project to snap centering in our status line. So now if I start laying down joints in my viewport, you can see that Maya automatically positions those bones appropriately so that it goes down the center of the joint. If I hit my Y key, it's going to enter into the last tool that I just executed. In this example, the joint tool. So you can see how quickly I can start laying down these joints, directly getting them exactly where I want them in my character because of that really cool projected centering that Maya is handling for me automatically. So the next one that we want to look at is how we can use another snapping tool inside of Maya, which is the live surface. So always make sure you turn off the projected snap when you're done with it. In this example, what we want to do is we want to make some joints that conform to the overall shape of this polygon hair. Like if this was a game character that's going out to a game engine, I want to have some joints that might deform that hair and kind of do some pseudo dynamics with the animation of those joints. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that piece of geometry, make it live, and go back to our joint tool. And you'll notice that now as I start to lay down these joints, they're actually going to snap to the actual surface of that polygon hair. So it's another very powerful function that we have inside of Maya just by combining the joint tool with a basic snapping tool. And again, it's always a good idea to turn off your live surface when you're done with it. So the next thing that we're going to look at really quickly, and just we'll clean this up by deleting those guys, is the um, hidden IK solver, the spring solver. So the spring solver is, is a solver inside of Maya and it's not on by default. You don't see it by default when you go to the IK handle tool. By default, you see single chain and rotation plane solver. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a sort of accordion or spider leg, and we're going to put a couple IK solvers on here, and I'm going to show you why you might want to use the really cool hidden spring IK solver. So let's go ahead and lay down this accordion leg. We'll duplicate that, kind of translate that guy up. We'll go in here and we'll grab an IK solver that's just a simple, a traditional single chain. So we'll grab that guy and we'll grab that guy. So, you know, we move this. You can see that it doesn't really solve that great. It's not compressing it on itself at all, really. It's just sort of, it doesn't really look like a spring. It doesn't really look like an accordion compressing on itself at all or a spider leg compressing on itself at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to run the mel command IK spring solver. So when we run that guy and we go back to our IK tool, you can see that we've now enabled the hidden IK solvers inside of Maya, the HIK solver, as well as the IK spring solver. So what we can do now is add our IK spring solver onto this guy. We'll grab both of our accordion legs here and we'll compress those down. And you can see that the, the drastic difference between the way these guys solve, much different. And the thing that's really cool about the IK Spring Solver is if you bring up the attributes for this guy, there's actual control over how this is going to compress and contract in the solver attributes. So we get a nice ramp widget that's going to allow me to adjust where is the compression and contraction, you know, going to really fall on this IK Solver as it goes down the length of those bones. How do I want to handle the compression and the contraction of those guys. So it's again a very powerful solver inside of Maya. So the last thing that we want to talk about is how we can use utility nodes inside of Maya to gain speed in our rigs. So let's get our control rig turned on. So I've got this control rig and a lot of times you'll build a little intelligence into the rig. You know I've got a simple IK solver on my feet and I've got these hips and I want to make the hips automatically be centered over top of my feet. So this is something that a lot of people would do with expressions. The problem is if you get hundreds and hundreds of expressions on your character, the evaluation of the rig will get slow. 
So what we can do is we can actually use utility nodes that live inside of Maya's shader creation, the create node, to basically use these math nodes that are compiled nodes inside of Maya to get speed out of our solver here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and just increase our um, our count to a level of zero so that we only display the nodes that we graph. We'll grab both of our feet as well as our hips and we'll just graph those into our node editor. If I hit my five key it lets me toggle through the names of the node editor. So what we want to do is we want to take the average of the left foot and the right foot and have those drive our hips. So we're going to use a couple of math nodes to do that. Now what I've done here is I've grabbed a few of these utility nodes and I've added them to my Maya's favorites. So if you go to the utility nodes, you can take any of these guys and you can say add to favorites. So you can see there's a whole list of these nodes, lots of math nodes inside of there. We'll get rid of that guy. And if you jump back to my favorites node, you can see that I've already got this set up. So I've got this plus, uh, plus minus average. We're going to basically use this as a sum node to add together our left foot and our right foot and we want to get a multiply divide node in there that we're going to use to basically divide the output of our two added feet together so that we can average those out to drive our hips. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab our feet and I want to grab these guys and expand them out a little bit. So I'm going to hit my three key to show my most common inputs and we're going to do the same thing for our plus minus average here. So what we're going to do is we're basically going to just grab the translate out and we're going to pipe that into input 3D to the first uh, first holder and then we're going to grab our second translate out and pipe that into our second holder for input 3D. So now we've got the sum of those two feet coming in there. Pretty straightforward. So we're going to take that and we're going to have that go to our input 1. So we're going to take the output of that and just pipe that into input 1. And what we want to do is we want to switch this from multiply to divide. I want my X and my Z to be 2 and I want my Y to be something you know a little bit more extreme something like 6. So we'll just take the what this is doing sort of it's taking the left foot the right foot adding it together dividing it by 2 for my sort of front view and then for my Y view dividing it by 6. And we're gonna have that just drive our hips. So we'll go to our translate for our hips boop and we'll pop that sucker in there. So now if we go back and we grab our foot and we start moving that around, you can see that we've got this nice little intelligence that's been added to our rig. Now obviously this is a very simple example, but you can imagine that if this was hundreds and hundreds of expressions that were replaced with compiled math nodes, the type of speed benefit that we would gain from that. So those are just a few uh, tips and tricks that I've uh, showed at AU. Basically when working with characters, things that will help you work with them a little bit quicker. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it.